Hi everyone. The noisy miner and the common miner are two of Australia's most misidentified, misunderstood and disliked birds. This video shines a spotlight on both these bird species so you can learn more about them. With the identification tips we'll be covering, by the end of this video, you'll be able to easily distinguish between the two species. Let's start with our first, the noisy miner. The noisy mino is a sassy grey bird with a black head, along with yellow on the feet, beak and around the eye. Despite their annoying behaviours that I'll discuss later, this is a reasonably cute bird. Being a type of honey eater, they feed mainly on the nectar of flowering plants. Still, they will also eat insects, fruit and small reptiles. Noisy miners are native to Australia and can be easily found along the east coast, including Tasmania. Initially, they were limited to grassy forest and woodland edges, but in the last century, they have taken over most of our suburban and urban parks and gardens. Their numbers have increased significantly due to the abundance of flowering plants in these areas. It's unusual to spot noisy miners flying solo, as they tend to live in colonies consisting of 20 to 100 birds and generally maintain close contact with each other. When colony sizes grow to 200 to 700 and beyond, that's when things become problematic. Namely, the noisy miners will drive away and bully other bird species. Noisy miners closely resemble two other species, which we won't cover in detail today. The yellow-throated miner occurs further inland. You are unlikely to see it along the east coast. And we also have the black-eared miner, which has a restricted range between the border of Victoria and South Australia. You really need to experience being in the presence of a flock of noisy miners to truly understand how they got the noisy part of their name. Noisy miners have more than 13 different vocalizations, each communicating a different message. We'll go through three calls today. Most calls are loud and clear with a hint of complaint. The most common call you'll hear is the contact call, which is basically persistent chirping. Next, we have the aerial alert call. This is typically given when a noisy miner sees a bird of prey approaching. When other noisy miners hear this siren-like call, they know there's trouble above and will seek cover and lay low. You'll then experience a brief moment of silence because the birds in the colony will stop calling as the threat flies over. Another call you're likely to hear is the ground predator alert call. An individual will let out this call when it detects predators such as foxes, feral cats, snakes, goannas, or anything else that can pose a threat. Upon hearing this alert, other colony members will unite, surround the threat, chirp all at the same time, and then proceed to mob and harass it until it moves on. So next time you hear a noisy miner in distress, look around to see what they're fussing over. You might be able to discover something you didn't know was there. Let's move on to the next species. The common miner is a brown bird with a black head and white underwing patches. Like the noisy miner, they also have a yellow patch around the eyes, along with a yellow beak and legs. This species was originally confined to India. That's why you might have heard of the previous common name, Indian miner. The spelling of miner looks unusual because the word is derived from Hindi. Confusingly, miners and miners belong to entirely different bird families, with the myna being closely related to starlings and the myners being a type of honey eater. During the past century, common miners have become one of the most pervasive bird species in the world. They have successfully colonised various countries, including Australia, New Zealand, the Middle East and South Africa. Due to their now global distribution, their name was modified from Indian to Common Miner. 
it's essential to note that the word common in this bird's name refers to its global presence rather than their local abundance. Common miners are very adaptable. They prefer built up urban and suburban areas. Specifically, they like open spaces, parks and gardens, industrial estates, streets with nature strips, and the good old rubbish dump. They'll scavenge and eat almost anything, including fruits, seeds, vegetable matter, scraps, and garbage. This species is not well liked because they have a tendency to attack other birds. They're notorious for attacking and removing other bird species from their nests in order to eat their eggs and young hatchlings. In some cases, the miner may even take over the nest site for its own use. Miners are known to use garbage as lining material for their nest cavities. This practice renders the cavities unsuitable for other birds to use later. So how did common miners get to Australia? I mean, it's pretty far from everywhere else. In 1883, the Department of Agriculture intentionally introduced common miners, thinking they would address the problem of the plagues of locusts and cane beetles that were around at the time. However, it was later discovered that these birds did not eat these insects as much as anticipated. As a result, the common miner adapted and rapidly spread, causing problems for other species. Just over 50 years later, the government had yet to learn the lesson from the first introduced species failure and decided to introduce another animal to address a pest problem, and that's the cane toad, which is now a massive problem for birds, pets, and native frogs across most of the east coast. Common miners are vocal birds that produce various sounds such as croaks, squawks, chirps, clicks and whistles. In fact outside Australia, some people keep these birds as pets for their singing and their ability to mimic human speech. Here's one of the common miner songs. When there are one or two birds, their song can sound quite pleasant. However, birds of this particular species gather together just before sunset to join what is called a communal roost. A single roost can contain hundreds to thousands of birds in just a few trees. These are typically located in well-lit areas like shopping centres and car parks. The commotion of thousands of birds catching up on their days can be deafening to us humans. By the next morning, the area below each roost is practically painted white from the masses of drop-ins. Here's what a roost of common miners sound like. Both of today's species are controversial. Some groups on Facebook have even banned about asking about either of them Due to the responses of hate, it conjures up. Why is this? It basically boils down to both species reducing other bird species populations by taking their food and nest sites, as well as being aggressive towards and even killing those other species. In the interest of keeping this video short, I've included links in the video description on how the introduced common miner and excessive numbers of noisy miners are impacting the ecosystem and what we can do to help address the problem. Although some negative aspects are associated with these species, it's important to recognise that they do provide some positive contributions to the environment. For example, the common miner helps with insect pest control and the noisy miner helps with seed dispersal and plant pollination. I'm not saying that these positives outweigh the negatives, but it's not a simple black and white or negative sort of situation. Recall earlier those alert calls the noisy miners used to warn each other of dangers like birds of prey, snakes and cats? Well, other clever species like the Australian magpie and fairy wrens have learnt if they listen out for the noisy miners alert calls, they can take cover themselves, thus those eavesdropping species also avoid the danger. And it's not just this. 
Other bird species also benefit from the noisy miner's ability to team up and mob not only predators, but also cuckoos. So other species nesting in an area with noisy miners can be at an advantage. Providing those species don't become the target of the noisy miners though. Noisy miners are kind of like neighborhood watch vigilantes that other species should not cross. Okay, let's get back to our focus, identification. These birds look pretty different here, so why do people get these confused? Well, it's more about the similarities between the two species. Here are some. Distributions. Noisy miners and common miners have a lot of habitat overlap. They look similar. They both have bold yellow beaks, legs and markings around the eyes. They're both a similar size. As discussed just before, they can both be considered pests. And the name is easy to mix up. In the first part of the name, both species can be noisy and both can be common within their range. The second part of the name, minor, minor, is troublesome in Australia due to our accent. Technically, many of us replace words ending in er and or with a schwa, so this makes words with those ending sound like they end in an a. For example, a minor saw a noisy minor and a common minor in summer. It sounds like all the miners are the same. When we hear this though, we can distinguish which miner is which by listening to the context. Throughout this video, I've been trying to stretch out the R's for clarity. Just be aware that most Aussies won't do this. Let's see how we can make the upcoming identification skill stick. The problem with field guides and videos is that they dump all the diagnostic data onto you. For example, Noisy miner is grey, common miner is brown. The problem with this is that most listeners tend to forget this information several minutes after hearing it. That is, unless they have something to help them recall it. I've been studying and memorising the calls of Australia's bird species for the last few years. So I've picked up several memorisation techniques. One is the concept called chunking, which ties somewhat random information together making it easy to recall later. We're going to use this technique today through a memory device, also known as a mnemonic, to help identify today's species. Because both species have many similarities, identification is going to be a multi-step process. First, when we see the bird, we check for that yellow beak, legs, and the eye patch. That's the easy bit. To figure out whether it's a minor or a minor, we'll need to determine whether the species is native or introduced. We'll figure out the name afterwards. Our memory device for today is the earlier mentioned cane toad. We will associate the brown body of the common miner with the cane toad, both of which are unpopular introduced pests. This rule will help us determine where the species originates. Let's run through an example. We've got the yellow eye patch, and we see here that the body is brown like a cane toad, therefore it's introduced. And this is a grey one, so we reverse the logic. It's not brown, thus it's the native species. Okay, now we know that the mystery bird that we see, we know where it originates, but is it a minor or a minor? Let's look at the spelling. M-Y-N-A really stands out here because we don't have many words in English that look like this. whereas Words ending in ER are commonplace. So you can think MYNA is a foreign spelling, therefore it's the introduced minor. And MINER is the regular spelling here, consequently, it must be the native minor. Also remember the term common in these bird names is on the global, not local scale. So once you know the spelling is foreign, we put them together and we have the common minor. I know this association process sounds a bit convoluted, it's just here to act as training wheels. After some practice, you'll be able to identify them without much thought. In the end, don't worry about if you get parts of the names mixed up. When talking to friends and fellow bird watchers, if you add words like brown, grey, introduced or native to your description, they'll know which minor you're talking about. Let's test out this technique with a quiz. Okay, we've got a brown bird here. 
This one's a common miner. Remember it's brown and introduced like the cane toad and has that foreign spelling. Next up, this one's gray. So we know this one must be local. It's the noisy miner. Okay, so what's this one? This one's actually a trick question. This bird doesn't have the yellow legs, beak, and eye patch that today's miners have. By the way, this one's an Australasian fig bird. Okay, no more tricks now. What's this one? This one's the noisy miner. Okay, and we've got one more. And it's pretty easy, it's the common miner. So how did you go? Next time you see those common and noisy birds with the yellow around their eye, just remember the cane toad and then you'll be able to follow through the process. There you have it. Today we had two very common species that have many similarities, but hopefully now you'll be able to determine which is which. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. And let me know in the comments whether you've had any experiences with today's species or you have any questions. Thank you for watching and see you next time.